Hi guys. Hey Darren. Hi Rita. Hello, hello. Ed. Looks like we got a couple more here too, huh? Hi, Drevis. Hi. <laughs> Using a different computer tonight than last night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> hey, Marsha. Hi, David. Hello, Brad. Wow, the gang is almost all here. Travis, I have to ask, what kind of doggy is that in your Im your image there? That is a Briard. A Briard. They're an old breed. They were used during World War One to jump the trenches with supplies and paper to send notes across the lines. Really, Briard. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Pretty doggy. She is uh, very, very protective. <laughs> Jelly, you want to do a roll call and we'll get this thing kicked off? Marsha looks like she's chomping at the bit there to, uh, you know, want to uh, talk to Brad, as usual. <laughs> Whenever you guys are ready, looks like a few more might be coming in. Um, I'll keep watching. Okay, we can, uh, I guess, uh, give it another minute or so. Okay. Since I was the one that stiffed y'all last meeting, <laughs> I greatly apologize for. Um, that was a huge, uh, huge mistake on my part. We should give a little bit of grace. Oh, any news from Andrea? No, no news. Okay. Um, Dylan said no. Amy was a no. And then Dylan also? Yeah. So we're, we're waiting on um, Andrea. And um, I'm sorry, what? Nathan. Nathan, yeah. And Paul? He's here. Oh, I missed him. Yeah, there we go. Hi, Steve. <laughs> well, let's, go let's go ahead and do the uh, roll call and then we can get kicked off and then uh, those guys join us. That's great. Okay, Andrea Mannion, Amy Gallegos, Dylan Rye, Brad Nixon. Here. Travis Ridley. Here. Judith Dunlop. Here. Jason White. Nathan Hoag. Steve Paul. David Carroll. Here. Rita Russell. Here. Darren Hollingsworth. <laughs> OK. All right. Um, before we kind of jump into our festivities, I know Darren's got a kind of a short fuse, so I will uh, just say up front that he's going to have to bug out in about uh, 15 or 20 minutes. So he's going to catch the first little bit of this. So I'm going to go kind of quickly through uh, the first part. Excuse me, Brad um, uh, and Shelly, uh, since I um, hosted the meeting, do I need to make the motion to uh, approve last month's minutes? We do, and I need to confirm that we have a quorum real quick. Can you hold on just a moment? Oh, certainly. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Four. We have four members on board. It may be five. That's what Shelly's trying to determine. Is it four or five? It's a simple majority of those appointed. And Steve, you'll, you'll serve as a voting member today uh, in the event that the quorum is not present. Are you frozen, Steve? Your hand's kind of right there. Are, 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 you, are you still seeing us? 
Are you able to gather? The new kung fu move. That's okay. He, he may be he may be joining back in. Hurry up and wait, huh? Sounds like a city function. <laughs> no offense, Rita. No offense, uh, Darren. I'm taken. <laughs> David, you, you've got some colorful artwork. I like that. Scott and Darren, we don't have a quorum. We need to have at least five, Ooh. five boarding members. Uh, Darren, I defer to you. In the past, we have not started an, an ACE meeting with um, less than a quorum. Um, ACE cannot take action as without official action. Um, although this could serve briefly as an information session. Um, so ACE is not acting in a bot in this, in terms of being a, a, a body at this moment, but if uh, we could proceed very uh, generically with an update for Marsha in respect for Marsha's time, um, we could, we could take a brief moment to have Marsha, go through what she's going to talk about, which is some pretty good stuff. And I would ask ACE to respect that there's not an official, this is not an official ACE meeting. Shelly, are we okay with that? Hold the phone. I've got Nathan. Nathan, save the day. Beautiful. Thank you. And y'all, I apologize. I need to break for another meeting here at five to four. So Nathan, Nathan, can't, Nathan can't hear me call him a hometown hero, but he is. <laughs> we do have a quorum now so we can go ahead and approve the minutes we're off to the races thank you uh could i get a motion please to approve the minutes of august 12 2020 i move that we approve the minutes of august 12 2020 and a second nathan oh you were uh attending could you uh second the um motion to approve the minutes of August 12th, 2020. Oh. Speaker, Nathan. Your audio, Nathan's not working. If you, yes, I'm just <laughs> if you If you second that, just hold up your finger. That should work like this. You, there you, you go. Second it. Okay, good deal. <laughs> your audio is not working, Nathan. I don't know what that is. But I'm really glad you're here because you make ACE a quorum today. So thank you for <laughs> jumping on. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. So with our minutes approved and um, we've called roll here, we've just got a couple items to go through. Marsha, you're kind of center stage uh for what we would like to kind of hear about and um and i think we can kind of pursue maybe some future actions if we want to talk about that and then judy you'll have to help me with an there was an open item that we can discuss later after um uh, after marcia has her presentation okay okay well thank you so much again for giving me time i always enjoy coming to your meetings and updating you on uh, small business affairs uh, large and small uh, I'll start with the agenda item, COVID small business resources. Um, I'd like to start with, we are still working with federal uh, county, federal, state, county, and obviously city of Inglewood uh, financial relief assistance programs. Currently the PPP program is in the forgiveness stage. However, uh, banks are, do not have the forms and have not been trained fully by the SBA yet. So they're not actually having very many companies do it. A few banks are. A few companies have already filled it out, uh, those that want that forgiven sooner than later, but uh, it's not a rush at this time, but we are assisting people with that. I'm going to bring on a contractor who is a CPA to help with the nitty gritty details of some very complicated cases. Um, uh, the newest uh, 
State of Colorado, uh, Energize Colorado uh, Gap Fund has been released, was released on August 31st. It will close at midnight on the 14th, that's Monday. Um, that program uh, is at Energize Colorado uh, backslash gap hyphen fund. I will send a few notes in. Uh, I believe I send those to Shelly for the minutes with some, some um, links, et cetera, for you. But that gap fund has been launched and uh, we are getting uh, not as many calls as we got when IDLE and PPP were launched, but very, very busy on that. The alternative funding source is still on the uh, state SBDC and OEDIT site, and they continue to add and update. So when Inglewood opens a program and then closes it and then reopens a program, those are all updated um, all across the state and other programs when um, the Kiva program came out or, or other programs, that, that's the source for all of those other funding sources. Um, SBDC has been very busy. We have a, a full-time staff is fully staffed at the city of Aurora that handles Aurora citizens only. And then I have uh, a team of six contractors that are all working uh, tirelessly <laughs> with uh, everything 100% remote on one-on-one -on -one consulting and webinars. I will tell you that our webinar numbers are um, double what they were in all of last year. Our one-on-one -on -one consulting numbers um, are double what they were all of last year. We are, are doing a tremendous volume in assisting small businesses at this time. Um, as you would imagine, that, that doesn't surprise me. The thing that might surprise you is that the uh, number of inquiries to start a business is always counterintuitive when there is a recession time or a, or a difficult economic time. More people believe it's easier to start a business, and those of you on this line know the answer to that question, uh, that it is not. Um, but we do have quite a few people attending all of those startup classes. Uh, so short of all the financial relief uh, programs, including the ones, the wonderful ones from your city, thank you so much. Those have been very helpful to the citizens. Um, there is a um, Colorado Legal Relief Program that we have, the SBDC has par partnered with them, and that is uh, free legal advice for anything COVID related, and it cannot be anything in litigation. So uh, there's that program. And again, I'll send a little recap with these, a little blurb about them and the, the contact info. Um, of course, since we're 100% remote, all of our webinars are being attended all across, uh, well, not only the cities uh, in our territory uh, and the state, but we're getting people from Hawaii and New York, et cetera. So uh, it really doesn't matter. I think the SBA and the Small Business Development Centers are simply helping whomever is coming. When someone wants to come in for one-on-one -on -one consulting, we then refer them to their local SBDC, whether it be somewhere in the other 14 centers in this state or somewhere else in the country. Um, we are starting tonight a Spanish language accounting series. It's a three-part class, and we have 21 registered uh, participants in that. We have hired a bilingual Spanish native speaking uh, consultant in Aurora, and she is doing all of the classes in Spanish, all of the startup classes, and then I'm gonna talk about another uh, service that she's doing. Um, so that, that program is uh, happening in the spring. We're currently in the fourth quarter going to translate a um, four and a six part series on um, early childhood development. And once that's translated, we will offer that in Spanish as well in the spring. It is offered, being offered currently in English at other centers. And since Denver was doing it, we decided not to duplicate because people are going to whatever center they need. It doesn't have to be at every center. The final new uh, sort of product I want to talk about is called Business Conversations. We are getting, uh, during our consulting sessions, what we're finding is that People are asking about very specific things. They just want to talk about it with someone. And so I've asked our um, eight consultants to pick two topics each and do a one hour business conversation on a topic. And it's about 20 to 30 minutes of presentation. And then it's just discussion and Q and A. We'll have two in English every month, the rest of this year and one in Spanish. Some of the topics, just to give you an idea are, are you selling how your customer wants to buy? Are you financially prepared for the best and worst case pandemic scenarios? Um, what should I avoid in digital marketing? Um, how do I transition to a virtual workplace? 
Is my blog bringing me paying customers? <laughs> um, beyond increasing sales, how can I save my business? Um, how do I get over my fear of video marketing? And how do I lead and manage during a pandemic? So those are the topic areas that are coming through. Um, we're starting this month, so we don't know what the response will be. Generally, the first or second one does, doesn't have as big a response as once something gets going. Uh, so that's based all on client citizen need. That's been coming to us. Um, the, la uh, the last thing I want to talk about, then I'll take questions. I'm sorry, I'm kind of rambling, aren't I? Um, so um, we generally in March every year, and this year we had planned to move it to May. We're going to, we do that um, small business uh, expo and lenders fair. And we do it at the city of Englewood and it's always very successful and well attended. And we generally hold two of those, one in uh, Douglas County and then one at Englewood, the city of Englewood every year. And of course we couldn't hold it and can't hold it this year uh, in person. Um, Darren and I have talked about this. I've talked about it with my team. We, we don't really have a format of how a resource fair and a lender's fair could uh, happen at the same time. So I wanted to get your feedback. We're getting feedback from the consultants, from some clients, and we'd like your feedback on whether you would prefer a resource fair where we bring together those resources for small businesses and do some kind of a virtual event, or whether we do a lender's fair and have them talk about the different things that are whatever's current because current now wouldn't be it would be ppp forgiveness it would be the gap fund maybe and it would be so you see what i mean so if i could get some feedback on what you guys would like to see or what you're hearing that people need we'd like to put some kind of a 90 minute event together uh, uh virtually for the for this fall and i'll entertain questions at the same time or either <laughs> thank you And Brad, you're muted. I see your mouth moving, but no words. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's what my wife says to me all the time. So n never mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, when the topic came up to have you come in, I was really hopeful that you'd be able to kind of maybe give us some ideas how to guide us through different ways of being uh, prepared for the PPP kind of forgiveness um, legislation that's coming up or not coming up, whatever the case may be, um, et cetera, so that we are prepared as businesses and how in different ways maybe we can communicate that to the business community in Inglewood. You know, I don't know, you know, David would probably be another good one to kind of chime in on this to see what else the um, Inglewood Chamber is looking for but um that's i mean I, there was i had a like a panicked moment a couple weeks ago and i called darren and i said hey i'm looking for some of this stuff feeling like i might be slightly off track here um and then um, your name came up so that's really where um where this all started and to answer your question let me just back up now that i pitched that one question um, as far as a, a lender's fair versus resources fair, I'm, um, I would feel probably if there was a lender's fair, you would probably get into the, some question, the same questions that I just asked. So, um, you know, maybe it's not so much a lender's fair, but an information fair and then how to get additional res re lending resources on, on top of that. Um, but resources at this time might be really, really helpful. Thank you. Can I answer your first two questions? Yes. or address them. So the preparedness for the PPP forgiveness. Um, the Accounting Association has put out the best and the SBA and SBDC uh, Association and thus all of us have accepted that, that as the um, uh, template for uh, working out different scenarios and whatever. Uh, you can work with one of our SBDC consultants but if it gets very detailed, it needs to go to our CPA consultant, which is where I would send a business that's been around more than about a year or two. Does that make sense? It's more complicated. Um, there really aren't final rules yet on that PPP and how it's going to be done. And some of that is that forgiveness has a little bit of, of um, shading around what the bank is going to do. And so until the banks are ready to accept that and know exactly what they're doing. We've held all kinds of webinars on what's the latest, what's the greatest, and answered questions. We have had as many as 150 on those calls. 
Uh, we did one about three weeks ago. Um, uh, and we'll continue to do the PPP forgiveness ones and our CPA runs that. Uh, and then he just answers the questions he had. I have to tell you at least five times in the course of the hour, he had to say, we don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. So there's still um, uh, documentation, verification policy and procedure coming from uh, Treasury um, as well as the SBA on how to, to do this. And then your bank will also have their guidelines. So we can't answer all those questions yet. And I'm sorry, it would be nice if we could. Uh, the second thing about the upcoming legislation, we certainly have a team at the state that is watching all the legislation um, in the state as well as at, at the Capitol in Washington. And they update us until something is, uh, um, so how, what happens is, and, and I'm gonna use IDLE as a great example at the beginning, what, those that were on the committee in uh, the Small Business Committee in um, Washington said, we're gonna give everybody $10,000. Uh, you'll get a check in three days if you apply. And then the president added other icing on that cake. And then when the entire thing came to, when it became law, it was not exactly that. And then when it was signed by the president, it was changed again. And then it was went to the SBA and to Treasury. And when all of that, that gets uh, put into procedure and policy, the final outcome was that if you applied and you had a certain number of employees, not contractors, you would get 1,000 per employee up to 10,000. And they did not, I don't believe they were not able to give those checks out within three days. It was just not possible based on the response of the um, uh, multitude of businesses that were impacted obviously and reacted and, and um, applied. And so I think we're sort of in that same place. I, I ask people to have lots and lots of patience and compassion for ourselves and our businesses, as well as all of those assisting us and our businesses, because um, this is all new to everybody. And until things get um, ironed out and figured out, we just keep, we, we say, here's what we know. And we don't know that yet. Here's what we know. We don't know that yet. And so, um, I don't know if that answered your question, but um, uh, as far as legislation, we, we don't, I don't really talk about it until it's something we're going to work on. I listen to it. I read about it. I, I, we're watching it all, but there isn't anything you can prepare for until we know it's coming because we thought a lot would get passed before uh, Congress took a break and it didn't. And so um, I don't know if that's the answer you wanted to hear, but that's sort of where we're sitting um, as SBDC right now. And as soon as things pass and as soon as things happen, there is a um, uh, uh, Slack channel that Darren is on. And um, I was for a while putting things three and four five times a day on that. I'm now putting things on about once a week. And he, so if something passes and something happens, it's there and he will know immediately and be able to let you know um, because we all check that um, and we get pinged when there, something's been added. And so that's where all this sort of economic development and small business people are, are tuned into anything new that's coming. And if, a, if the governor has a press release or the state or anything like that, that's where those go. And so um, it, Darren has his, his finger on that pulse and is very active in all of those groups, the um, Arapahoe County um, Task Force, as well as the Denver South um, Business Resource Network. Both of those groups meet, um, I think every other week now. It was every week. It was sometimes every couple days, but it, it has stretched out. Um, did Thank that you, answer Marcia. your question, I, Brad? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was long. And as that information comes out that Marsha is referring to on Slack, I'm happy to share that with the group. Y'all, I hate to do this. I have to scoot uh, for another meeting. Y'all take care. Bye, Darren. Thanks, Thank thanks Marsha. Thanks, all. Take care. Thank you. David, what are you hearing in the uh, kind of in the community? What what are people looking for? What's the kind of the heartbeat of stuff maybe we could do in conjunction with the, the city of Inglewood and um, the SBA? Well, I, I'll tell you, the, we're, we're focused on two things. I mean, as it comes to lending, the small businesses that we, we talk to, I mean, more needing more resources, very few have the appetite to take on loans. Um, grants are, you know, well, but there's still a lot of fear in moving forward. 
And then the other thing that we're trying to focus on more is uh, looking at more workforce development. Um, you know, we partnered with the Repo Douglas in the city of Inglewood. We had over 150 people sh uh, looking for jobs from 12 employers. We got a lot of people unemployed out there and, and there's, uh, I think we had close to 280 people actually signed up and 150 showed up. And so um, that's what, you know, workforce development. And then, you know, we were, we got a lot of, we got a lot of our, our members and people applying for that gap fund and we'll see where that goes. And we continue to look as well, but um, most of the people are saying, Dave, I, I'm not interested in taking out any more loans or doing anything right now. It's just, you know, I've, I've, I've taken out it is what I can. There's concerns about the PPP and what that may look like and give back. And so to take anything else on is just not something that people are interested in, from my point of view, what I've heard. So. And I think what we're seeing is there is application fatigue. Uh, people applying, they're exhausted. They want to run their business or figure out what to do now. And they're tired of applying for things. I, I We are certainly getting that. And so when they talk with us, we say, okay, like, yeah, I got a better chance at this one than this one. And we are talking people through that. But thank you for that. Uh, I did know that you had a very successful um, workforce development uh, uh, event because Darren keeps all of us posted on all the committees I'm on with him. Um, so that's an interesting, uh, there might be a way to combine that into the resource fair and have that be the focus or part of the focus. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, to be honest, there was a handful of people that um, were just trying to understand how to write their own resumes. Uh, there was people out there that didn't know. So there's a lot of that kind of projects that we're working with to try to get, you know, some of these people have been working these jobs their lifetimes and now they've been laid off or furloughed and they've got to reinvent themselves and as all of us do with our businesses as well. So I just say application fatigue. Those people should all be nonprofits. <laughs> then they really get application fatigue. That's how nonprofits well, it, run. You know, I, I had a long talk with the uh, 800 number today uh, on the uh, gap fund and you can, as a membership organization, 501c6, you can apply for the gap fund. Well, we already have. So Good. We're, Good. we're there. We're just, we're in our, I think our review phase now. So one of the first ones that we could get those, those membership organizations in, and we were happy to hear that. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Thanks for that feedback. Marsha, I do have another question. So if, if I'm not mistaken, gap funding, there's 50 million. Is that correct? And it's based on need versus based on position in the queue. It is, so let me pull my notes out. Okay, may I? Um, and that's for the state of Colorado only. So this is a, it, it is a Colorado uh, fund and it's 25 million and it's a mix of grants and loans and 15 uh, and a, there's a breakout for tourism only. Um, uh, the focus, just the focus is Minority women, veteran-owned, uh, Native American, and rural businesses. That's the focus. So there's a grid that you can see uh, on the video if you watch it on their website. And they get uh, extra tick points for those uh, minority rural business related. Does not mean they'll all go there. They're going to, they had, um, what did I say? They had 1,500 applications as of yesterday. And, um, and that's the first day after a holiday weekend, right, when they launched it. Um, and the first tranche closes the 15th, the 14th at midnight. So they, what they had intended to do was do four tranches of equal amounts of money, but they had no idea they would get this kind of response on the first tranche. Um, they do not intend to, to, it's not a first come, first serve. They're looking at everyone in the tranche and making a decision. And then they will open a second tranche, which is the plan. That is the plan. Many, many people had multiple tranches and ended up spending everything in the first tranche. They do assure us as much as, as, as late as yes, uh, Thursday last week that that was not the plan this time, that the plan was to give some of it out each tranche. Um, they, have, they do have to expend all the money by December uh, of this year. Um, 
but it, it's 25 million, uh, which is a mix of grants and loans, and they can raise more money. So that's what they, the, the minute all these applications hit, part of their volunteer team just moved into fundraising. So we hope that that will be filled again and, and filled further. Yes? Steve, you're on mute. Silly question. I didn't understand the word that you used several times. The first what? Tra tranche. 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 Uh, opening of uh, a batch, some of the money, okay. and then round two, round three, round four. So rounds. Thank you. Sure. Rita, if I could pick on you, um, you know, what is, what's council hearing? What's, uh, what are some things that we need to, uh, you know, be thinking about here with, with Marsha while we're, uh, while we're kind of talking about this? Um, to be real honest, I mean, council hasn't heard a whole lot. Um, I think that Darren Hollingsworth is doing an amazing job. Last night, uh, um, Eric Dunker and Julie Beggs came to speak at council from Arapahoe County Douglas Works. And, um, and Darren, I mean, I know this is something that we've talked about in previous meetings. Um, so they're partnering now and, and it was what was talked about before. Um, here in this meeting. Um, I am not hearing so much. Um, I probably heard more right here than I've heard on council. Okay. Can I, can I make a comment? Um, Eric and Julie, for the rest of you are from Arapahoe Community College. Okay. Yes. And uh, um, um, I can give you a little bit more um, of what cl customers are asking, clients and citizens are asking us for, because I'm, I'm dealing today with what's out there right now. We are talking with people about, do they spend all their reserves from their company if they have any left? Do they spend all their personal reserves on their company? Where's that line of where they stop and actually lay the people off and, and, and it cut their losses? We are talking to people about where's the line where they close their business altogether. We're talking to people about negotiations with um, landlords. We're talking to people about um, how do they get the equipment they need to be remote. How do they, the, the business model is the number one thing we're having con conversations about. What's my business model when I'm a, uh, somebody that has always done face-to-face -face work, you know, business, an insurance salesman or whatever. How, how do I change and build that rapport online um, how do I change my sales from retail to online sales? Um, those are the, I mean, everything you can, the restaurants, you know, what are we going to do? And the ones that were very creative very quickly, and the restaurant association has been marvelous in um, all of them sharing ideas on what to do and how to do things and, and how to, to be different. Uh, we have a retailer, I'm going to give you a retailer from Stanley uh, Marketplace. Um, and, uh, they're doing little videos in their basement and, and they're making baskets, Mother's Day basket, Labor Day basket, neighbor basket, all kinds of baskets with their retail things inside. And they're purchasing a few new items to put in there. And she shows them all like a little Vanna White in a video and then they're very funny. And then um, they sell them and they sell out every single time and their sales have been very good. Now they deliver them. They'll either mail them across the country or deliver them in the front range. And one of the orders said at the bottom, please deliver this on such and such day before because that's when we're doing Mother's Day with my mother and, and a small French fry from McDonald's. And so the husband that was going to deliver the basket actually went through McDonald's and got a small fry and delivered the fries with the thing. We have people doing the most creative things and all kinds of customer service oriented things in, in changing their business model. And so we're doing a lot of that kind of conversation with people. So any kind of problem that's come up, we're dealing with. And, and we're, we're, we're asking tough questions of people because some people really need to close and, and they're, they're hurting themselves in the long run. And um, those are the tough conversations. Couple people want to retire and this has pushed this ahead sooner to look for someone to buy their businesses. And uh, so it's, it's been a, um, 
a, a myriad of, of everything you can even imagine. If I could add a little bit of what Rita was um, in there too. It, part of that, we were part of that conversation as well. And, and I believe part of that partnership, correct me if I'm wrong, Rita, is that um, it's gonna be scholarships for people uh, based off of a business that has somebody to hire but needs to retrain that person. And so again, that's another workforce um, issue that's trying to find, you know, a lot that has been said is, you know, now I've lost my job, but I realize I've got to be creative and, and look for a new job, but I don't have the skills or I don't feel like I have the skills. And so we'll be working with some of the businesses in our greater area to try to find at least open positions. And then these scholarships will help these individuals get back to school and, and try to gain some of those skill sets so that they can get those jobs as well. So, so can I ask a question, um, David, and maybe Darren knows um, some of this information, but this has been my concern for a while. Do we have a feel about businesses in Inglewood and the ones that are struggling and may not reopen? I mean, that's been, that has been asked at council, but we haven't really gotten an answer to that. Uh, well, I mean, do we, do we know people that are in trouble and we're trying to get them? I mean, I guess to Marsha's point as well, there's, there is probably, I would say a handful to 10 that are, are in that area where they're like, Ooh, do I stay open? Do I continue? I mean, what the chamber has been doing is as well as working with Darren and those guys for those people is try to get them a little bit more funding to extend them a little bit longer out. What I'm hearing Marsha say is, maybe we should be pushing them your way so they can have that hard conversation. I mean, if, if they do get another funding for two, three more months, is that still enough to, you know, I think that's where everybody's holding on. They think, gosh, if I can hang on for a couple more months, maybe this will open up and things will change. But we've been saying that for a while, haven't we? And so- yeah. I don't see things opening up through spring, to be honest. Yeah. I, I just through till, May, April, maybe next year, back to what we hope to be open if then. Um, so what we're trying to do is help people find a way to keep their business alive and how can they do it differently. And if there isn't a way or they're not willing to do the way, and there are some entrepreneurs that say, I don't want to do that, I want to do that, I want to do that. And I said, well, then are you finished with this business? I've owned six. There's a point where you just close businesses down for whatever reason. And um, Sometimes that's the conversation. We hate that conversation. We're about business development, not business closing down. But if that's the best thing for the entrepreneur and probably for the city in the end, right? If someone closes before they get into too much trouble, then we'll have that conversation with them. And we tell people that closing your business is just like opening it. You go through a whole bunch of things. You have to close all those things off and, and you do it with the best um, good intention and good faith that you started your business with. You don't just leave in the middle of the night. And um, we haven't had any of those conversations during this uh, pandemic, but I have had those in the past where people go, we're just gonna put stuff in a trailer and move to Arizona in the middle of the night. And I said, no, you're not. You're gonna call your landlord right now in this office while I'm sitting here, put them on speaker and we're gonna talk with the landlord about how you can do a closing your business, going out of business sale. And you know, what can we, do? I mean, you know, there are ways that we can help people exit the way they, entered with good intention. Um, and then again, on, on some of those conversations, people don't necessarily want to have as well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they just, they're, maybe they're, a, they're slightly embarrassed or whatever, because it's a tough conversation to have, so. Well, and with us, it's all confidential. We're not going to tell anybody, you know, we can't tell anyone it's confidential. And so, um, and that does make them feel a little bit better. Um, it is sad, it's sad. Um, I've only had a few of those conversations since March. Um, I would have expected I'd have more, but I don't consult every day as the director, my, my, my team does. Um, but we're not having a lot of those conversations about closing right now. But my guess is those that have closed or are right, are right there may not even go, gonna call us. We may not know until the emails bounce and the phone calls aren't answered, phones aren't answered. And that could take us a year to figure all those out. Right? Right. Yeah. I will say this, the report that I have heard 
uh, from Sean is that manufacturing in Inglewood seems to be doing well. I mean, COVID-19 has uh, benefited them. I will tell you that, that Darren and, and, and Manufacturers Edge and the Small Business, the Small Manufacturers Advantage program, they're, the combination have been working manufacturing very, very diligently. And um, those manufacturers, they pivot on a dime. They know how to say, oh, I can make this. Well, now I can make PPP or I can make this or I can make. So yeah, they, manufacturers, have, some have really pivoted and done well. Uh, I hesitate to even ask this, but is, is it something that we should be talking about to create like a um, um, business options or business alternatives kind of resource um, presentation or whatever that walks business owners through a lot of that that you're just talking about, Marsha, that is... So here's what it's here's what you kind of need to gird gird yourself for you you need to be thinking six to nine months okay so if you can't go six to nine months here are some options do you want to apply for more grants do you want to uh you know and maybe give people more of a uh, checklist or i mean some maybe need more remedial help that they're actually marching orders of things that they need to do and preparedness for that um, I, I, I think that it might be nice for somebody to kind of um, address the elephant in the room in a respectful and uh, confidential way that, okay, if this is where you're at with your business, um, be assured there are people that can help walk you through this process and don't be thinking that you're the only one that, that is in that spot. And the more that we know about those different scenarios, maybe the more that we as a community, as a city, um, as business leaders can actually help them. Maybe it's, maybe it's connecting a business owner who is just on his last, last dollar with an investor who's quite honestly out shopping for bargains. You know, there, there, maybe there's a way to connect the two. And, and I'm just, I'm looking at this from a practical perspective that says, there are people out there that take this as an opportunity, as a time to expand and to, um, you know, deepen their investments in, in various areas that they're interested in. If we have that ability to connect the two people or to help people think through that process, could we, should we, do we want to? Um, so I think from a, a pivoting your business plan or something like that, that could be an interesting idea for the um, resource fair. Might, I might think through that. As far as matching up, we can't confidentially match up people, but the chamber could match someone up. So if, if you knew a, a, a small business that needed assistance and the chamber knew someone that would be willing to mentor, um, that's, that's how I think that kind of a program could go. I don't know that this is the time to ask everyone struggling in business to stop and mentor someone else. I mean, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to ask someone to mentor when times are good, but that's something I think the chamber could think through or you all as a group being people they could reach out to if, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, I, that's, we're, I think of us more as like your advisory board. You, you come to us and you ask us questions and we we give you kind of tough questions or alternatives or say, did you think about it this way? Try to turn things upside down or on its ear. Um, so I think we're doing that. If they come to us, that's what we are doing with them. But I think as far as, I remember one time when I got laid off a long, long time ago from an executive position, the uh, church I went to, I lived at, at, out of, not in Colorado, the church had, um, uh, it was executives looking for the next adventure. I think that's what the group was called, Adventure Executives or Executives Adventure Club or something. But it was all people that had lost their jobs. And there were about 20 of us. And um, we were all pretty high level people. So we had our resume and those kinds of things, but couldn't find jobs. Um, and it was, it was a fascinating uh, support group of people. Um, I do know Lone Tree does something similar to that or used to do that in their uh, uh, 
council building and that the building where they hold council downstairs they used to do that once a week um, unemployed executives would get together and meet so I, I'm not sure if that's answering your question but I'm um, that just was popping in my head Nathan any thoughts turn your mic on no microphone <laughs> uh, Brad, I, I was just going to chime in for a second. Uh, I, I know of a business right now uh, that is looking for that exact scenario that you just laid out. So yes, mm -hmm. there are people out there. Wow. Well, there's kind of an endorsement for maybe maybe we need to talk more about this and try to figure out something that would be helpful for the businesses in the area. Um, my big concern is I drive down the streets of Inglewood all the time. So I'm through the city multiple different directions. And, you know, I see something change, uh, you know, a closing sign going up or, uh, um, you know, all of a sudden it looks different. You know, somebody, uh, you know, is, uh, has, has left. And I'm just real concerned about that because for all the effort that it takes to put a business into place, we know that it's going to be equally difficult to just start them back up or somebody else to move into that building. And, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of an ounce of prevention, I guess, um, at this point, uh, being creative with ideas, I, I would really, uh, you know, kind of, I, I don't have any ideas at the moment, but that's kind of what, that's kind of what is stirring my soul at the moment. Judy, I would be happy to contact that person or if you want to do an e introduction, if the SBDC could do anything, um, I'd be happy to, if you want to e email and say, hey, I thought Marsha might be a good person for you to talk to, I'd be happy to do that initial conversation and see if there's something we could do to assist them. Okay, uh, thank you, Martha. Uh, uh, um, uh, Marsha, I'm sorry. Um, we've got your email, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll be happy to follow up on that with you. Yeah, just say you thought that a conversation might be good and then I'll see if there's anything we can do with them. But because there are so many resources at our, at our, um, in our world, <laughs> the resource world, that um, rarely can we not find something that can help someone. But you know, right now, there are things that can't be helped. <laughs> I, and that's a, that's a sad thing to say, but there are businesses that won't, won't make it. And, th and that makes me sad, but it's also true. Um, um, that's mm. fact. I just want to say Thank it's you. really exciting to see some of the resources you know that are there and the work you're doing. Um, now at our last meeting we talked about um, you know doing another reach out to businesses uh, to see where they're at. You know, seemed like there's a lot of um, interest in a survey. Um, does anybody know where that's at? Uh, Steve, if you can hold that question for just a minute, because that's what one of the things that I wanted Judy to kind of kind of guide us through. I, I think that is an open loop that we need to uh, make some decisions on based on um, last month's meeting, and I think that that might be a good liftoff point for us to uh, you know talk about. Um, Marsha, I don't know if you have anything else to add, or if any anyone in the group has any more questions. Um, David, if you're talking, I can't hear you. I was just shaking my head, no. Oh, okay. I thought I saw your lips moving. Okay, thank you all for your time. Happy to, to do whatever we can for your citizens and, and assist you. Thank you, Mark. Thank Martha. you, bye-bye. So we're waiting for Nathan to start his sign language class so that he can tell us uh, Either that or um, create memes over his picture, his uh, his video, so that we know what his thoughts are. Um, <laughs> I guess there's a chat function if we if you if you have some burning things. <laughs> Travis, you've been quiet. I have been. You know, this reminds me, 20 years ago, about this time, my husband and I had a coffee shop. And I was five or six months pregnant with twins and I had a 
15 month old at home and the coffee shop was open 106 hours a week. And I can tell you, I was working myself to death. And I finally stopped and said, what do I have to have in order to stay in business? Um, what would be ideal to make money? And what is the uh, parameters that I, uh, the red line, that once I reach that red line, I have to let go and move on. And um, ultimately the red line was, there was no way I could have three babies <laughs> and a coffee shop and pay somebody to work the place for me at the same time, the way I was putting in hours. So um, we bowed out, but um, it's such a heartbreak. I'm sure for people that have put in, I mean, uh, my husband and I, I used to joke, I have this clock that's really loud and I'd say, well, that's my $127,000 clock because that was the amount of money we put in to that business. And we were there three and a half, almost four years and reached that screeching halt point and said, okay, hands up, I'm done. Um, but how important it was to know that you needed to draw a red line in the sand. And I, I think you're right, Brad, that helping people decide what's the red line, what's that stopping point, and it is okay to walk away before you lose everything. Um, we didn't want to lose everything. We'd invested what money we had and we were done with that, but I wasn't willing to um, sell the house or mortgage it anymore or, or do I, I just had that red line and I said, I'm done. Um, hi, yeah, I, right now people, they don't even know there's a red line. They're just running full bore down the track, hoping that this whole thing flips around and that they've managed to keep enough resources to still go. And it could be somebody, I have a, I have a couple clients that are doctors and um, they're just right over off of Harvard Gulch at um, Porter in the office buildings. And here's a company that, that normally makes pretty good money, but because nobody went to see their doctors for four months, they didn't have clients coming in. They didn't have any money coming in. They did not furlough anyone, but they leveraged themselves massively in order to keep uh, uh, two family practices going. Where's the red line? I don't, I think you're right. It's the elephant in the room. Should we be, should we be kind and say to people, look, if you want to talk to somebody about what the red line, what the options are for the red line, what are you, where, how far are you willing to take this? And then once you reach that point, are you willing to let it all go and back away and at least maybe still have your retirement or maybe have the beginnings of going somewhere else in time to, you know, relearn something else. Um, that is so tough. You know, I, woof. I don't envy anybody having to look at that right now. And I'll bet there are more people that have just walked away than we know. We j it just hasn't appeared yet. It hasn't showed up yet on the books. You know what? Uh, that's a really good point. That, that could be. And I think, I think something um, that happens, people that are wired that way, um, you know, you just, you just want to succeed so badly and you, you, you're so used to doing whatever it takes. Sometimes, we don't want to ask for help either. You know what no. I mean? Yeah. And um, so I really like expanding on that business resource idea and, you know, and, and, um, and getting the message out, whether it's through that survey or however that, you know, maybe we can help talk to us because I'm, I'm guilty of that, putting the blinders on and putting my head, head down thinking that I, I have to solve this. Right. Yeah. Well, Judy, could you run us through our open items from uh, the last meeting? Um, I guess maybe you and Steve, because you guys both kind of have some of these thoughts. And let's let's kind of see what where the discussion goes. Um, well, I wasn't exactly sure if these were um, action items, um, and I think I did kind of ask um, Darren if there was anything I needed to provide to you. Had you been in contact with Darren over the last month on anything? Yes. 
particular? I, okay. I have. Um, um, and survey, the survey was one of those open items, but I, since I wasn't here last month, again, I apologize. Um, right. You know, I did. I wanted to make certain if there were some things that needed to carry over that we were uh, respectful about that. Steve, you're waving your hand. Um, well, I'll speak to that briefly. Um, we talked, uh, we had a lot of different ideas about we think it's time to reach out to businesses again and the phone tree idea came up, but it seemed like uh, as things, as the dust settled from the discussion, the survey would, was a good way to start and, and definitely reach back out save a phone tree for um, something a little more uh, specific or um, urgent. But um, it, it just seems like that's where it's settled. Uh, don't you think, Judy, that, um, that let's, let's get a survey out there again right away so that we can find out more what's going on and um, do some reach out that way and, and uh, see what help people need and, and uh, that they know that we are, um, uh, we care about them? Uh, yeah, and Andrea spoke a lot to that, and unfortunately, she's not here today. Um, so, uh, I mean, everyone seemed to agree with that idea of kind of brainstorming and, and doing something fairly quickly. I don't know what exactly what that would be. Well, my experience with surveys is, um, you know, people have an aptitude or a, an attention span for about five questions um, at the most. So what would, uh, what would five questions be uh, that would be helpful? And then who would we get that information to that it would be helpful to them? Well, I'm, I'm wondering what uh, Marsha, uh, because she did lay out some of those things um, that they were answering for people um, that were um, very topical um, and, uh, and seemed to uh, work with a number of people. Uh, maybe, you know, just finding out what some of those questions are. Pretty direct, like she said. Um, maybe not a yes or a no answer, uh, but maybe thought-provoking. Um, and then... Um, you know, for us uh, as ACE, um, and whatever, you know, Darren, um, Darren's ideas are, um, where we could be a conduit, I, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. So do, I mean, based on what Marcia said, I mean, do you, I, I mean, could you glean one question that you think would match, uh, match with that? Well, I liked uh, actually what Dreva said. Um, I don't know exactly right off the top of my head how you'd write that, um, but that that's pretty much, that starts off the conversation. Like, where are you? Um, and um, not just where do you want to be in three months? Um, where are you going to be in three months? but where are you today? Um, I don't know, Drevis, do you have any thoughts on languaging? Drevis, click your audio. <laughs> nope, oh, keep she clicking. Went, she went down. Uh, until she gets back on. Um, I, I don't know verbatim um, what, uh, uh, you know, as Marsha kind of read the list out, but they were pretty straightforward and pretty simple questions, you know, just Englewood related maybe uh, as well. I don't know if that would be number of employees, um, um, downsizing, um, business model, um, what the manufacturers are doing, um, perhaps as, as it relates more to a small business. Um, I mean, I kind of liked hearing that about manufacturers. Sorry about that. My power went out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a 
about manufacturers uh, being so creative um, now. Well, I, I appreciate that too. And I, I see that all the time when, I mean, just with my own experience for things that I'm needing, there are things in the past that I put off uh, purchasing. And I suspect that there was even a couple months of, uh, or maybe, maybe more, maybe four months worth of demand that just went to nothing. And now there's a lot of pent up demand that uh, these manufacturers are are backfilling and then some because people have decided just like the kind of the home home remodel revolution that everyone's going through right now. Uh, you know, there's probably similar things like that in business. So it does not surprise me that manufacturing um, has picked up um, and that people have figured out new ways of making things that their customers have wanted. Um, Dravis, I don't know if you heard this, but uh, Judy asked you a question. So I heard her ask me a question. I just didn't hear all of it. So go ahead and ask me again. Um, well, on your idea of the red line um, you know, and um, um, how to perhaps language something similar to that, not just where um, a person um, believes or they want to be in three months or where they actually will be in three months, but where are they today? Yeah, I think that um, being as bold and front as possible and saying, you know, the way things are looking, do you have the, the finances to make it through the next six months before the possibility of things being back to normal will start to kick in? If you don't, let's look at what your options are. Uh, we looked at selling our business. Uh, we looked at actually hiring a young couple to come in and take over for us for at least a year till we got ourselves settled. We looked at all of that financially. Uh, we had a number of people interested, but in the end, um, sometimes when you're struggling, again, it goes back to, I don't know who mentioned it, but people are looking for that fire cell and they're not willing to give you the full amount of what you've invested in terms of um, equipment or anything else. And Brad can tell you, you know, simple refrigeration is not simple refrigeration. <laughs> so um, I think that maybe even just saying, where's your red line? If you think you're doing well and you're good for three to six months, then here's the things that we think you need to have in place. If you, if you aren't sure, or if you need to know what those things are, let's look at a list of things that you might wanna have implemented depending on your type of business. Mm -hmm. Um, so that you know you can make it through till possibly next spring. Um, yeah. As was suggested, do you have the facility to do that? Do you have the finances to do that? Um, are you covered if you're behind a little bit on your rent um, for a couple months? What, you know, how does that look? So, yeah, yeah I, I just I, agree with it. I would agree with that. And I think based on what Marsha was saying, um, I would basically say six months, and where we're at right now, that's about March, but uh, that's pretty close. I mean, I don't yeah. know that I'd even look at three months. I'd just say, how do you look? It would depend on your business because, yes. mm -hmm. you know, primarily Colorado brings in a lot of tourists, but we bring in tourists during the winter. How's that looking right now for anybody that's doing anything associated with the ski industry? That's, I mean, there's like zero out there that I've seen on that. How are they going to start back up again? What are they going to do? What are their parameters for them? If you're working in any way associated with the ski industry, yikes. So I can answer and a little if they're bit six of that. months out, they're almost over. I can answer <laughs> a little bit of that since I had a conversation with Vale Associates last week. Wow. Um, they are going to do everything in their power to open up all 37 of their properties. So wow. they, they are focused on opening the mountain um, as uh, the guy that I spoke with down at Crested Butte said. And the things that are not directly associated with opening the mountain, which they call ancillary services, they are taking the approach of um, either subsidizing other people, helping them get those done, or just to you know, a break even type of approach to be able to keep things focused on the one mission. And that is for people to have that kind of recreation because they know that 
you know, for the us who want to go skiing, they're count we're counting on them, and then the communities are actually counting on them. So that is that is a potential area that uh, you know people even even in this area, you know, might be able to leverage as help the ski resorts in different ways with the different products that they might need to uh, to support uh, support them. Anyway, that was just a little anecdote that I happened to pick up. Not that I'm a uh, um, you know, knowledgeable uh, in any extent about it. But. So can I uh, just weigh in? I, I think that, um, and I have no idea, are there businesses in Inglewood that aren't open right now because COVID-19 will not allow them to open? Do you know that? Uh, I know that hair salons and nail salons are, well, I've seen several go under. Um, and I'm not sure if they were Inglewood or Sheridan. They were right there on federal. Um, so there were several along that line where they're open under a very limited capacity and financially it just didn't work for them. But I don't know about anything else. There's no, re there's no restrictions and there's no businesses that are not at some capacity of right. Okay. okay. That so doesn't mean that doesn't mean they're going to make it, but they're all the businesses that want to be open have the ability to be open. If they're okay. closed, it's just simply they've chosen to right. stay closed for a little bit. And I, I mean, we went to Zomo's last week uh, and basically they were eating outside and, but that was a personal choice. They could have, um, they've opened now for indoors. They, I, well, they said Labor Day weekend. So, um, but it was for personal reasons. They chose not to open before that. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess really, and this has been my concern for the city all along, it's not just the personal businesses succeeding for the benefit of the owners and the community. Um, our, uh, our budget is based, probably over 60% of our budget is based on sales tax. And so it's, it will hurt cities also if businesses go under. Um, so I think that, you know, we need to, to figure out how to work together. I know that my hairdresser, it, it was astronomical what she had to do to get back open. And um, one of her doc doctor friends said, why don't you just retire? She's old enough to retire. And she said, because I don't know what my clients will do. And so she's gone to all the expense and all the trouble um, so, but I do know that, that there comes a point when businesses just can't make it. And, um, so I, I don't know if you, if you have a business, what do you feel like when somebody calls you and you're struggling? You know what I'm saying? Um, well, and okay. asks if I'm struggling or what, what do you mean? Yeah. Or asks maybe some of these questions that we're thinking about asking businesses. Well, I certainly think if they're voluntary things where people could um, anonymously or confidentially get information to consider various options, I think there, there might be some value in that. I will tell you from my perspective, I suppose there's a little bit of application fatigue. Um, that's a little bit easier for me to kind of tough that out. I will tell you it's information fatigue because the amount of stuff that is changing continuously um, between the city, state, and federal level, and then the, all the agencies that are involved, not to mention customers who, you know, kind of have to put in their two cents about, you know, how, how your business should be run at this particular time. There's, there's, an, there's a lot of fatigue in just that aspect of staying up with all the different things that are going on. Now, it, it maybe I'm only sensitive to this because we have, you know, four businesses. We are in, you know, three different municipalities. Uh, you know, so, you know, we're a little bit more impacted by that. It's a little bit more difficult for us to stay on top of things, but I, I have to believe that there's other ones that maybe don't have the intestinal fortitude to stick with, uh, you know, stick with all that. 
um, you know, and go, gosh, where do I go to get all these answers? How, who's, who can help me? And that was, that was kind of my panic moment a couple of weeks ago. I was like, am I doing everything I'm supposed to be doing here? Feels like I'm losing grip of the ball and it's about ready to fall out of my hands. I mean, I do know when we were calling businesses back at the beginning, um, there were a lot of businesses that needed the information and we're so grateful to the city because of the uh, grants and, and things like that. So I think that Darren is a huge resource um, for that. Um, Rita, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, when you said, you know, council as a whole, um, where you're not hearing anything. Um, I really find that very surprising, I guess, in some ways. I know that not all businesses, maybe the business owner maybe doesn't live in Englewood, but um, it, as you said, when you started making those phone calls and the response was good, did the response just drop off then? Um, and, and wonder, you know, why would a business person call the council? What can they do? Uh, I mean, I'm kind of asking that question. Well, and the bottom line is it wasn't really the city council that was doing the calling. It was community development. And Darren was heading that up. And I mean, I called because I was on the liaison to the ACE committee. I did some calling. The mayor did some calling. And we did hear things about that when the calling was going on. But when the calling just dropped off, I mean, we get COVID-19 updates and recovery updates. And, and so maybe I just haven't been diligent enough to read through the recovery updates. So, and I apologize for that. I'm going to go back and, and look through that now. Um, so we hear things occasionally when somebody will um, call in to speak to city council. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder, I just wonder if we were reaching out, uh, you know, really positively about, you know, hey, we want to see what we want to see how things are going, how you're doing, and what resources we could help connect you to. Here's a couple simple questions for you, and then maybe hit them with that, um, you know, the hard question about, you know, that has to do with the red line and what and, you know, two or three other questions that are relevant that, that just get in touch with them, we, you know, that just show them you know, we want it, um, that we care. And here's here's some reach out you can do, you know, please call or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and so what I'm wondering about right now is if, um, you know, rather than waiting until um, next month, is there a way that we could um, uh, get some questions together and have someone kind of pull that together and say, okay, here's a suggested um survey what do you think and then and then kind of move a lot move it along in a process um soon i mean i i'm just a little i'm li i'm just unfamiliar i'm so new to the group here that uh, i'm familiar with how things are, are rolling along you're doing great steve no apology no apology needed boldly go where the rest um dare not go so um. <laughs> and actually i appreciate that that's that's very positive and that and, and yes i do believe that would be impactful. And I think probably the sooner the better because the longer time goes on, I think things get more difficult for businesses. So here's, uh, here's the kind of the, I guess some of the, the information on the surveys. I do believe in maybe Shelly can help a little bit. I hate to put you on the hot seat, Shelly, but I think the city would have to do the survey for us. So it'd be a prioritization of resources for them to do that. Um, I just received another survey from the city about the uniform code that I have yet to answer. I have every intention of answering it, but I just have yet to, yet to get to it. Um, the, uh, the statistics are just in general behind surveys, electronic or otherwise, you get about a two or 3% re, um, you know, return. So if we send it out to even just the businesses that we know have registered with us, um, that we have, which kind of number, I don't, I haven't looked at the full list in a while, but there, you know, maybe there's a, a, a couple, 3,000 um, that are on that, probably no more than 2,000 that are on that list. Then we would see, you know, a, a response rate at best of somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, three, 400, um, you know, at the most that would, that would come back. 
assuming the information that we have, which there's no, um, there's no guarantee the information that we have is correct. As anybody who's called down through any of that information, um, you know, you get about one in five that uh, you actually have the right contact info or that will pick up the phone. So I don't say that to disparage, disparage the idea. I'm just saying there's, um, you know, a couple things that for us to be able to do that, one, we'd have to come up with a list of questions. Two, we'd have to see if that's something that the city can do on our behalf. Um, you know, Rita, if this is something you think has merit at council level, um, you know, probably, you know, you voicing some support for it or how the, how the council might use it might be helpful. Um, I don't have anything off the top of my head, but Shelly May, actually, Brad Power is the... Um, COVID recovery um, person that's in charge of that. And so he may have some suggestions also. And I, I, he's, he's in your department, is that correct, Shelley? Yes, he's the director for our department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have um, a lot of information in Miami. We have groups set up in there. So um, talk with Darren and see what we can do about gathering information as far as the businesses. Um, it was recently updated after we did this survey early in the spring or the, you know, when COVID first started, we started calling businesses. So um, they could talk to Darren about that. I mean, I'd be happy to come up with a, you know, a couple questions or something, or we could combine, you know, our questions, kind of email them, uh, you know, email them. Are you um, thinking about calling the businesses again or blasting out an email? Well, um, I, I'll be honest, I don't have time to make a hundred phone calls to get five responses. Um, you know, that's just not practical for, uh, you know, what I've got going on at the moment. Uh, I would prefer an electronic thing. I mean, I can't speak for anybody else. And I know when I ask for that, then, then we're generating work for the, for the city. And that's, you know, that, that's another concern is I don't want to generate work for you guys that's, that's unnecessary. Now, if we could do a, a blast out on an email, um, we can do that through communications as well. So that would make it easy for, for everyone. I, I, I guess, you know, when I think about surveys, I think about what's the goal? What, why am I trying to collect this information? And I, as I'm listening to you, as I, as I uh, you know, from the discussions you guys had last month, and then Marsha, you know, maybe the goal would be, um, how, are we missing anything? How else, how, what other, what, what other things can we do to help you? Um, and, and maybe the, the onus is on up us to come up with some creative questions that, that surface those things that people, you know, are feeling. I, I mean, one of the things that came to mind, that's why I was kind of trying to pick on you a little bit, Nathan, was, you know, maybe there's some groups that can be established um, through churches, nonprofits, and stuff like that, like Marsha said, you know, to pull together businesses that are trying to pursue those options, like her executive adventure team, whatever it was that she, that she called that, uh, that, that might be an interesting thing that we could maybe lean on the churches to kind of help us with. There are a lot of good things there, Brad, and um, um, I'm a uh, you know, in regards to the survey, the, the thought I had in terms of uh, um, is that if it had a positive message um, in the front end of the survey that people could see, even if they're not going to respond to it, maybe it's a, a little touch point, a positive touch point for business owners that they know they have, um, there's some support here, and, and maybe some of them respond, um, you know, just by some of that information. And then, and then if we could get... Um, uh, some people to um, to answer. Well, you know, you know, what do there's you know there's a couple things we're looking for. It's it's we want to put them in touch with what can we do to help, and we do want to get a pulse, right? I mean, we do want to get a little bit of a pulse on what businesses are gonna are closing or or are, are gonna stick it out. Um, if we can help someone make that decision, if someone if one of the resources can help someone make that red line decision, great. But we, that's one thing that we kind of want to get a little bit of a pulse on if we can, I would think. And I'm just going to say one other thing that I'd be happy to, um, 
um, put together a small list of questions myself and help coordinate that with some of us here. I mean, just to get just to get from point A to point B or C, right? I don't think it has to be 10 of us coming up with a list, but I don't know. Brad, you said you would, I would. Or Travis, are you interested in that? I mean, does that well, make I think I think group wise, I mean, if we could come up, come up with some questions that we all feel kind of hit the mark, uh, you know, once we see a handful of questions, I think it'll probably give us ideas. Well, what about this instead, instead, or in addition to kind of, kind of um, idea? Um, you, you know, some, if of you the want questions, that, some of the questions can be eliminating questions too. Like, you know, have you had to change your business model? Kind of like to know how, um, and do you think you're going to be able to main, you know, go the distance? Well, that would eliminate them from asking them further questions if they feel pretty confident then and, and they've been able to pivot in what they've done differently, then we can move on to the next one. No, I haven't been able to pivot. Um, I'm stuck in this spot, but um, if you have some suggestions, I'm willing to look down the list and click. Yes, I'd like more resources. Um, uh, I work in manufacturing, but I'm limited to, in terms of this way. Um, what are the possible resources? Um, depending on which direction they go with their answers would probably help us know, here's somebody that says, no, I'm, I'm done. I've done everything I can. I'm tired, but I don't know how to get out. What's the exit strategy then? And um, I do remember years ago with a bank training where they said one of the things they looked for when you were putting in a business model was, do you have an exit strategy? And I get that now. I didn't get it then. I was like, well, exit strategy? Who's going to quit? Well, <laughs> it depends on your circumstances. Um, you know, sure. lots of strange things have come up and people have different needs. The exit strategy is going to probably... Um, be a part of the picture ultimately sometime someday but if we word the questions in such a way that lead it down different paths that'll tell us if there's somebody in particular or, or certain types of businesses in Inglewood that seem to be showing more of a, a fragility point maybe we can then make the phone calls after that everything will be on paper in terms of the survey or the questions but based on their responses we can look at that and go oh man here's where somebody needs some help maybe we need to contact them and let them know these things are available to them um and then decide you know do we cross that red line with them do we show them an exit strategy do, i know that there are exit strategies out there i know there are um but i think the questions narrow down that that issue so Drevis, as I'm thinking, as I'm listening to you, one of the thoughts that comes to mind, uh, you know, for me, when I'm looking at doing different things, um, I, I don't know what I don't know kind of thing. Right. So I think that there's a lot of businesses, a lot of business owners um, that are in that scenario right now. You don't know what you don't know. Right. And you, you're looking for either um, uh, somebody that may have gone, lived through it 20 years ago, you're looking for somebody who has a plethora of ideas, you're looking for things that are in the market uh, that the SBA might offer, I, I think. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, kind of, kind of ruminating on that one question is how do we surface, uh, how do we help people that don't know what they don't know and what can we direct them towards? So let me, you know, we're running out of time here. We got about five minutes. I don't, I don't want to run over because I want everybody to have one last shot at talking to Nathan. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> one last, one last shot to, uh, you know, to say whatever they have. Let me suggest that um, maybe a couple of us come to, you know, at least a couple of us uh, offer up some questions. Um, Shelly, can, do we need to forward all these to you so that you can collect them and um, redistribute a, a set of questions or can we speak amongst ourselves? How's that work? Good question. I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. So, um, you know, in, in the past, I've kind of run with these things, but since we have a, you know, a couple, three people that are interested in maybe putting some of these together, let's collect them and then see if we can get some help to um, send out some kind of survey. 
one of the things that just, you know, kind of hit me was, what if we put a question in there? Would you like, would you, um, would you like to have a personal call from somebody? I, I mean, how dangerous would that be if we put that out there? And then, you know, which one of the 10 of us is going to call? Or is that a uh, chamber of commerce thing? Or is that a, you know, city council thing? Or is that an economic development thing that, uh, you know, return those calls for people that check that box. And honestly, I think that there'll be a few people that will, that would check a box like that to say, Hey, I want to talk to somebody um, in person. Anyway, um, moving on, uh, Judy, was there anything else that came out of the meeting that we need to kind of touch base on from last month? Uh, the only thing we talked about a little bit was uh, this idea of a, of a walking tour. Um, I know something that you had uh, uh, asked about as well. Um, when we went back to our 2020 schedule of events, uh, Amy brought that up. Okay. So maybe we can see uh, what we can do in the month of October for a walking tour, see what kind of ability to be able to do that. Um, or Rita, is there council direction that says we no boards and commissions can't meet face to face? I think at the current time, it is still, um, we're not meeting face to face. And I think as long as council does not meet face to face that, that boards and commissions will not either. Um, I, I am trying to push them to open up and get back to city hall. Um, because I think it's important for us to be back at city hall so that businesses know that we're going to open up. I mean, I think Statement. City Hall sets the, the tenor for the rest of the city. I really do. Um, and, and so I'm going to be bringing that up continually. Um, but right now, it, it is, yes, Zoom meetings are the way we're doing business. Well, let, let me follow up, Judy, let me follow up with that with Darren to see if we can, uh, um, if walking tours are even an option for us. We certainly in March kind of put our entire kind of plan that we had laid out on hold. Um, so that, that's a thank you for keeping us, keeping us on track and reminding us of some of the things that we had laid out. Yeah, Amy had uh, said something, uh, Zoom calls to a large group of competitors. And so I'm not quite sure what what that means. Um, and then Andrea said, perhaps a virtual tour on businesses. Okay. So we, you know, just were brainstorming some things. All right. Um, okay. If there's nothing else, then um, are there anything, is there anything that anybody else want to add anything new um, thoughts that have not come up already? No. Nope. David, if I could prompt you just slightly, um, sure. could you uh, couple couple words about Randy? Well, um, I to be honest, I didn't know Randy very well, um, but uh, I I can say that um, the membership and the board and uh, was has. The, the amount of, of um, condolences and, and, and caring stories that we um, have received from our member base and, and the board has been uh, overwhelming. It's been, there's, somebody always has a story that, about how Randy touched their lives. Well, I really appreciate what you put out about Randy um, and in support of Debbie and stuff, because I know Debbie worked at the chamber also. Um, it was very touching to read that coming out of the um, chamber um, chamber's office. And I don't know, is there, Rita, is there anything that's going to be done in council um, to remember Randy at the next meeting or anything? Um, we did last night uh, during council members choice, the mayor asked us, all to weigh in with thoughts about Randy and and she did bring up um, perhaps there would be a way to honor him posthumously. I, I don't know that that would happen um, at the next meeting. Um, Randy was a huge influence on this city 
um, for a long time. I, I actually have no, I went to school with Randy. He was, um, I think either one or two years older than me. Um, he was very popular in school. I think, he, I know he was um, uh, homecoming king his senior year. He also, I believe he was head boy for his class. Um, and, and he was in sports. Um, he did an amazing job, but he has been in this community. I think he was born in this community. Um, and, you know, he's worked for the schools. He's been the coach. He was an amazing man. And uh, he's going to be greatly missed in this city by a lot of people. And I mean, there are a lot of um, my children. I don't think we, we did not live in Inglewood, but they went to private school. Um, but a lot of our friends, their children uh, went to school when he taught there and he was the coach. So um, I believe there may be some discussion about what to do uh, posthumously for him as far as that goes. Other than that, there's been no discussion um, really, so. Okay, all right. Well, I do miss him. Um, he was a he was a good friend, and I always enjoyed talking with him. So he was. Uh, it was kind of hard to hear that. Um, Karen and I uh, shed a few tears for um, for Randy. I'll be real real honest, because uh, he's a he was a great guy. Um, <laughs> other things while um, Rita, do you have any updates from uh, council that we should be aware of? Uh, I do not believe I have any updates. Um, so nothing. Okay. David, I think you guys are doing a great job over there, by the way. If nobody oh, gives, you. You, gives you a pat on the back or says thank you, um, let us say thank you because I really like what's coming through the chamber. Well, I will say if uh, on a positive note and maybe a hopeful note for all our businesses is this year and actually from March until now, we've had the largest new membership growth that the chamber has ever had. So we are finding more and more members coming to the chamber and asking to be part of our membership. Uh, we'd like to believe it's in large part of how we handled ourselves during this period of time. So we'll go eight. That's, and, and maybe it suggests that businesses think they're gonna be around for a while. So that's positive, right? Uh, if we don't have anything else, um, I will call adjournment and give Nathan one task over the next month. Figure out how to turn that microphone on. Because <laughs> I like hearing his ideas and thoughts. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thank, thank you me. very much. Um, and uh, Shelly, you'll get back to us on kind of the working steps for potentially doing the survey. Yes, I will. Okay. And, you, and, I'll, and I'll make certain that I do my portion in uh, uh, communicating with Darren after you give me the heads up or Darren gives me the heads up. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank All right, guys. Take care. Bye.